Hello, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to use the Set Position node in Blender Geometry nodes. Add a plane and scale it up. Then, go to the Geometry Nodes tab and switch to the Geometry Nodes workspace. Click the New and create a new Geometry Node modifier. Switch to Edit Mode. As you can see, the plane has four vertices. You can see them on the Spread Editor with the index numbers from 0 to 3. If you want to display these index numbers on the plane, go to the Mesh Edit menu and enable the Indices option. You can also view the position vectors of these vertices. Each vector has three components, X, Y, and Z. For example, the vertex with an index number of 0 has negative 1 on the X axis, negative 1 on the Y axis, and 0 on the Z axis. As you can see, the Z value is 0 for all vertices because they only have X and Y components. Right-click and subdivide the plane three times. In this case, the plane will have 25 vertices with index numbers. Let's add a set position node in the geometry node tree. The set position node allows you to change the position of the vertices. It changes the current position of the vertices using a specified position or offset. Add a vector math node and connect it to the position node. Set the vector operation to add. It allows you to combine two vector inputs to specify the new positions of the vertices. Add a position input node. The position node outputs a vector for each point in the geometry. This vector represents the current coordinates of each vertex. It copies each vertex position data from the spreadsheet editor. Now, if you adjust the Z value of the second vector, the plane moves along the Z axis. To see the modifier's effect in edit mode, enable the on cage option. Next, add a combine XYZ node. This allows you to separate and control the individual X, Y, and Z components of the vector. Alright, what if you want to select a specific vertex and change its location? This is where the selection node comes into play. The selection input determines which vertices or points will be affected by the position change. By default, all vertices are affected. If connected to a Boolean mask, only the selected vertices move. Add an equal compare node. This node checks if two values are exactly the same and outputs true, 1, or false, 0. Let's add an index input node and connect it to the A socket. The index node reads the index numbers of each vertex. So, if you set the B socket to 1, it will select the vertex with index number 1. Now, if you change the Z position, it will move along the Z axis. You can also manipulate the geometry in the other axes. If you select the vertex with index number 20, you'll manipulate this vertex. What if you want to select more than one vertex? Duplicate the equal node. Connect the index node to the A socket. Next, add a Boolean math node. Set the Boolean operation OR. Connect both equal nodes to its inputs. Select the vertex with index number 17. This way, both vertices 20 and 17 will be selected and moved. All right, disconnect the selection node and set the Z location value to zero. You can also add a noise texture to manipulate the vertices. Add a noise texture. Connect its factor output to the Z location. Now, if you slide the scale input, you can have a wave effect. Disconnect the noise texture. Let's add an instance on points node after the set position node. Add a cube mesh as the instance and set its X, Y, and Z scale values to 0.3. This way, 
Each vertex will be represented by a cube. Plug the Boolean node into the selection. So, you can manipulate only selected cubes. You can use the offset input to move the geometry X, Y, and Z axes. Disconnect the selection node and connect the noise texture. When you slide the scale value, you can get interesting animation. Plug the scene time input node into the scale. Hit the space bar to play the animation. That's it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.